when I looked Des more. Describe to me what you saw in Linda Taylor the first time mm -hmm. the two of you met. Well, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, I, Jason had told me a little bit about about her, and I knew she was a model, and you know, I'd seen, I saw, I Googled her, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Um, and uh, but what struck me when I met her was how how warm she is. You know, she's just such a warm. Hannah loved her immediately. Took to her. And uh, speak to me about that. When 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 Hannah meets strangers, people she's never seen before. What's her initial reaction? Is it more you know, shy and reticent? Is she more outward going? What was the difference when she connected to Linda? That would be important to me. She, um, she connected with her right away. And she doesn't connect with everybody right away. You know, she, she's you know, going to watch a little bit and see what's going on and you know, get to know you a little bit. Um, but did you notice that right away she just went right, right away, to yeah. I, I think Hannah has a very good sense of people. And she also I'm, knows who we like. Yeah. She can pick up on it, right? You think? She can almost, I think she almost senses when people really like her. Really like her and are interested in her. You see this, she gravitates mm. to those people. People that are a little more standoffish, maybe a little, don't really understand her, um, she'll tend to keep her distance. Mm. And Lin um, Linda wasn't afraid of her. I mean, a lot of people are afraid Linda of her. Linda wasn't afraid of her. A lot of people are afraid. They don't know what to do. They're nervous. They don't know what to say, what to do. They're like, oh, you know, they just kind of... Wait a second. A lot of people are afraid of Hannah. Well, no, there's an energy uh, distance. I, I think they people would... get uncomfortable. I think, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, when they see severe disabilities... Mm -hmm. They're um, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. are, are uncomfortable. And uncomfortable. some people, it, manif it just manifests in different ways. In Linda's mm -hmm. case, in Jason's case, yeah, Jason um, too, both yeah. of them. And Jason had seen so the... She peeked into our energy. Oh, right. Uh, right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she Tune feeds. Off, she can sense that energy. Yeah, she's an unbelievable ability to sense that. Mm -hmm. What did you feel from Hannah when you first oh, looked in... Oh, she speaks to me so her. much. <laughs> I'm so tell many languages. Tell me what she I, spoke I wish I could translate to you, um, but she speaks to me. Therefore, that's why she attracts me. Uh, the moment I see Hannah, I see a, an energy that wants me, and I need that energy. As as far as she feeds into us, I, f I feed myself through her energy. I uh, I need those angels in, in my life every day. There is no um, no explanation. I, I can't tell you the language that I feel from her. Like even when we were listening to Beatles today, I knew that she was just dancing and tuning with us, and we're outside when she was uh, swimming. She, she was showing us, she was telling us. It's just that she doesn't express it. But her body language, her eyes, her energy, you just feel it. You feel it. Did you feel when you first met Hannah that she was trying to communicate something special, specific to you? Or that she was just opening I, up. I think she doesn't see herself the way we see herself. Speak or to me about else that. That we see children like that disabled with a neurological problem. She sees herself as, "Hey, welcome! I'm happy to see you. Come here, give me a hug, give me a, a Eskimo kiss." Yeah. That's how she sees herself. Yes, she she looks in her parents' eyes. She says, "Mommy, I need you." Or Sometimes she might have a connection with, with the person that she feels loved and the same way she might, she might be able to translate that. But she doesn't see herself as um, a red single girl. She sees herself just like her sister, Jennifer, and like me and like all of us here. Heidi, do you agree with that? That Hannah does not see herself as being different than her sister or other girls her age? that she is not conscious of the fact that she might be perceived as being different the way Linda has described? Do you feel the same? Um, well, I think it's a two-part 
question and answer there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think she definitely is cognizant of the fact that she's perceived differently. Mm -hmm. But I think she has the same wants and, and desires and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, hope. Mm -hmm. I can't say hopes and dreams. Um, I don't know, but... Uh, she definitely... As any other little girl, she wants to play. She wants right. to interact like any other little five, mm -hmm. six-year-old girl does. You know, she, she wants to be silly. She wants to communicate. You know, she... Yeah. She wants to be the center of attention. Mm. She, you know, she wants to swim. She wants to ride the horse. I mean, you know, like there's, there's, there's so many things about her that yes. She's very clever, <laughs> and and she's aware, and we know she's aware because she gets frustrated. Mm. She gets frustrated because her body doesn't do what she mm. wants it to do mm. in a lot of instances, and you can see the level of frustration. Sometimes she'll express it by. Um, I don't know, pulling her sister's hair if her sister's not doing or she can't do something with her sister. Mm -hmm. Or 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 Well, like her sister will be talking. Hannah wants my attention. Mm -hmm. Jennifer is a chatterbox. You know, she's eight mm -hmm. years old and you know she's got a lot to say, like most and Hannah wants my attention too and she wants to talk to me too and she's just mm -hmm. but I you know, Jennifer's talking, talking, she's trying to get me to engage with her. I can't ignore this child that's speaking to me. Meanwhile Hannah wants so Hannah will get frustrated sometimes and she will yank her sister's hair. She's like, stop it already. I want some attention. You know, I know mm -hmm. what she's mm -hmm. doing, you know, or she'll mm -hmm. try to get in between us. Or, you know, she's like, look at me too. I, can't, I don't have the same words, you know. Um, and to speak to the frustration, this goes back, but when she was having her regression and we didn't know what was going on and I was just trying to kind of push her along because I'm her mom and I'm, you know, I'm like noticing things aren't going well and I'm like, okay, I need to really work on this and that with her. Um, there was a point where she looked up at me and she had this look simultaneously of fear because obviously she was going through a regression. She didn't know what was happening to her body. And this pleading in her eyes and she looked up at me and said, trying. Mm -hmm. Trying. Because I was trying to push her along. She said, you know, like, Mommy, I'm trying my best. Mm -hmm. Trying. And so, yeah, she does know. You know, the, I'm a wordsmith. The, the succinctness of expression resonates more with me than other things. You know, I prefer reading Hemingway, who liked to make the sentences in eight words, than Russian novelists, you know. And um, sometimes the things that people communicate to us when they're hurting and scream for help but when they're loving and they just say love, you know, it's less words that communicate more to me. So as I'm listening to your reportage of things that Hannah says, what it sounds like to me is it, it's non-sensorial. It goes right to the heart of the matter. Oh. It, it's just... It's breaking news. It's the bulletin. It's not the essay. Absolutely. I mean, trying, mm. I knew everything. Yes. And then when she's, and when she's full of joy and she'll look mm. at me and say, happy, or she'll be, you know, I'll be putting her to bed and she'll say, I love you. Oh, man. You know, it's... Um, and I saw her with Linda Taylor today. <laughs> when when uh, Linda comes in um, and takes her shoes off, and runs across the, you know, the, the grass and just hugs her and, you know, plays with her and all that stuff, you know, and I, and I must admit that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share just a little secret confession that uh, uh, I had uh, some uh, reticence, I'm an emotional kind of dude, you know. Um, I got here a little earlier than everybody else. And I parked around the corner. I sat in the car for 15 minutes. I did a meditation. Because I didn't know how I was going to react to her. Because I never met. And I was worried that I would um, express some of my emotional... My emotionalism. Which she didn't need to buy into, you know? I wanted to come in here with just an open mind and an open heart. And I centered myself. 
And um, when I first saw uh, Hannah in the garden, first, you know, she was hugging Linda and she was doing the Eskimo kiss on the nose. And I was watching that with such great joy and her clear love for Linda. I'll That's carry that good. moment yeah. with me forever. Mm. Mm. Um, I told you in an earlier conversation that we intend to use you. Yeah. Others may have done that or attempted to do that before, mm -hmm. but they never let you know in advance. Mm -hmm. We're letting you know in advance mm -hmm. that we're going to use you. We're going to attract people to this issue because of all that supermodel mm -hmm. status and walking down the runway and doing all that stuff. And I've asked others in this room, and I'm going to ask you the same, and you can talk either into the machine or you can talk to me. There are a lot of people, beautiful people, gifted people like yourself, uh, and uh, high fashion models that lots of people look up to, worship. You know, the Heidi Klums, the El McPhersons, the Amans of the world, and, uh, you know, all the others. Is there a reason for them to become in Brett syndrome as well? Is there something that they can do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. What? They can just join us uh, in this uh, fight of reversal. The more, the more power, the better. The more hands together, the better. Uh, you came here when you saw the documentary and you do this work for us pro bono, which thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Jason did that from his heart. I do this from my heart. We all do here uh, for just one reason, one love. I think the same, the other, whether we're speaking about Heidi Klum, whether we're speaking of so many other um, icons that we look up to, yes, please come join us. Come hold hands with us. Because I know, I know we can reverse that. It's just one way. I look into their eyes and I see hope. These are strong people. I look into his eyes. I just, I don't see just creativity. I see hope as well. When I see your eyes, there is no way that we can back up, but only with a reversal. To Hannah, uh, to the other Hannas, to your bravery, commitment, and love, to your support, and uh, may God's will um, erase this syndrome from planet Earth.
I never ask or tell anybody to do anything. Uh, you heard tonight from some people who were involved in something that you may not have known anything about uh, a couple of hours ago. You know what to do. Um, we also understand that there are people who don't have the ability to uh, make a contribution uh, to the trust. We know that. There are other things that people can do. They can offer time. They can volunteer. They can offer services. But mostly, and the purpose of this, is to spread awareness. Because when enough people know, this will go away. So, look to your heart. Do the right thing. God bless you.